Hello, I'm Tracy. And I'm Steve. Welcome to our school bus conversion, Shore Leaf Schoolie. Merch, we got merch. I'm gonna keep this very short. We have a very limited supply of shirts available. So if you want one, click the link now in the description and go to floatingorb.earth and order yours now because this is a one-time thing. We got four designs, two t-shirts and two tank tops. The shirts are made out of organically grown bamboo and cotton that are free of pesticides and fertilizers. They are also dyed with 100% natural plant-based dye and they are hand dyed. They are very nice and very comfortable shirts. So if you want one, click the link and go to floatingorb.earth and order yours today because this is a one-time run. So if you want one, order now before they're gone and enjoy today's video. And remember to subscribe. We got into tiny home living, first living on a sailboat for a period of time while we were on holidays. The thing with the boats is the extreme amount of maintenance. We decided that we weren't ready to travel around the world on a boat. We discovered uh, school bus conversions that were going on and kind of fell in love with the idea of just being able to turn the key and drive your home away. I'm involved um, in design. I work with um, interior designers. So a theme I, we sort of had was sort of the modern farmhouse look. Keeping all the colors sort of neutral. I've never built anything this big from start to finish. I've worked on homes over the years and things like that, but it never, never been like my project from start to finish. It's always been someone else's. Biggest challenge with a school bus, it took <laughs> about two months to find all the leaks. I would fix a leak and I think, okay, we got it. Yeah, yeah. And then the next time it rained, there'd be water running down the floor. Until one day, I just finally got it. I was never looking at the complete bus. I was looking at, okay, we gotta take the skin off the inside of the ceiling. And then that was a project and I'd do that. And then, okay, that's done. Dollar wise, we put, uh, including the cost of the bus, uh, around $30,000 into it. It was two years of pretty much uh, every spare moment other than we took a couple weeks off for holidays. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the time was, all my spare time was spent working on the bus. Yeah. By doing it as small projects, you got goals and you meet those goals and then you kind of get this like, yahoo, we made a goal and then you move on. You know, so that, that really helped in building it. Baby steps. So this is our Bluebird school bus. It's got a uh, Caterpillar diesel and an Allison automatic transmission. It's uh, 32 feet long. One of the things we liked about this bus was the ground clearance for going off into the forest roads and that. I added the storage bins. The bus had no storage bins. I did make little boxes up to make it a little tidier. Uh, this is all outdoor stuff that we use. This one here is my firewood storage, our lawn chairs, wheel blocks, my gold pan. We put an exterior shower in. Uh, because we do have two dogs and half the time we have to shower them off before they can come in the bus. Uh, behind the fridge is where I installed the uh, on-demand hot water heater. So this is access to the controls for that. If I have to get it out, I can pull the fridge out and pull it out through the inside. There's ventilation up here for it, uh, exhaust. Uh, this is the air intake for behind the fridge. To, to get airflow behind the fridge. We put the bike rack on for our bikes. I can show you in the back door here. So the, we kept the door functioning because we like to have it open when it's hot out. It's just the regular lock bar. Drops down, I used uh, uh, just a regular house lock. And this here is so that when you're in bed, you can still use your fingers to open and close the lock. Under bed storage here. Behind here is the water tank. There's 100 gallons of water. That lasts about six days. It depends how many showers we have. Then this side, come around here. That's my shore power. This is the toilet vent for the composting toilet. This is the propane locker I made. So it's all ventilated and everything. Found metal I had. I can actually fit four tanks in here. 
Uh, right now I got three in here and the three tanks last us about a month and a half. Uh, more storage. Behind here is the uh, diesel fuel for the uh, diesel furnace. I kept the tank separate because I wanted to keep everything independent for troubleshooting. And uh, my air horns which I added because I wanted to be able to get people to know I was there when I honked the horn and the horn and the bus didn't do it. <laughs> Up on the roof deck now, this is last piece of the project. The deck is uh, cedar, it's just got an oil finish on it. The rail is just pipe fittings that I picked up at Home Depot and put together to make up, a, I think, a cool looking rail. And it's more just for tying things down, not as a, not as a railing, safety railing or anything. The deck itself is on four legs that are on top of the ribs of the bus and I use expanding insert nuts into the ribs and then it's bolted through into those. So it's basically it's one piece. Up here you can see the rays I did. It's, it's 10 inches high. Figured, well, the area I need to stand in while I'm working and that was this space. I've always loved the old rail cars and I've always been a train buff, so I always liked the train stuff and that. And this had the feel of the old rail car, which I wanted to try and grab and incorporate into the build. These skylights are just your Home Depot house skylights. Everybody says they're not designed to be flat. They don't leak, they're fine flat. It's no problem at all. They're a low E skylight. They are a tampered skylight. Uh, they're safe. No different than a car windshield. On the roof, we have six 100 watt solar panels, which come down into three 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries. And these are the three battery chargers that are 110 from shore power, because otherwise one battery will charge up quicker than the rest. By doing it this way, you charge them all equally. This is the uh, power inverter. That's a 2000 watt. There's two more batteries down in here. And then this is my breaker box here for the 110, which runs off of either the shore power or the inverter, depending on which way I put the switch here. So this is my space. <laughs> it's the space I'm allowed to do whatever I want at. I took the original bus dash and all of the stuff that was in this massive dashboard is right here. That's all that was needed. So these are the original switches. They do the fans and lights and different things, uh, wipers and heaters and everything. I added a CB radio, GPS system, Sirius satellite radio, and this is the uh, solar charge controller. I did leather on the dash. This is all leather in here. Originally, there was a steel doghouse over the engine down below here, so I built these cabinets. All these cabinets, there's only two bolts come out and the whole thing comes out for access to the engine. So it's, uh, it's pretty easy to disassemble. Like, yeah, so that's pretty much my area. Welcome to the inside of the bus. We kept all our windows, so it was important that we have privacy. I took blackout curtains and cut them to size, and then I put a rod in the very bottom, and then I created some leather tabs for them to sit snugly. I also created the same blinds for the skylights. I used the same material as the windows, and they work beautifully, just like so. Our sofa here is an old sectional IKEA sofa that we utilized the cushions. We have under cabinet storage with brackets that Steve made. Steve made these out of wooden dowels and leather. So they simply work like so. This does fall down to a, to a bed. Pulls out. Separately, we, we did them separate. Not as one unit. But, but each section. So behind the sofa, we have more cubby holes for books and arts and crafts. Our diesel heater runs um, along behind the sofa. It's just from Amazon. And we created these grates for, for the heat to flow. And then it runs all the way into the toilet room and under the bed to keep us warm at night. Under these seats here, we have, it just, it's just a pop-up more storage under each seat. Our dinette, Steve made, it basically appears to float, but it is a fixed table. Here we have an extra setting for that third person seated here. So this is our Grizzly Cubic Mini Wood Stove. 
We love to make toast, so they built a little grate that we can make toast here. This is a stone here that, that acts as the hearth. This copper sheeting on the side and the back of the stove it acts as a heat shield. And this is where we keep our wood storage and some dog toys and slippers. Welcome to the galley. I am half Italian, so having a cappuccino maker was very important. Uh, we have some floating wood shelves on either side just for the essentials, the coffee mugs, uh, dog treats, things we use every day. Propane powered stove. The brand name is Unique. And an oven with the broiler below. All our drawers are soft clothes. Here is um, utensils and the stainless steel pots and pans. Steve did, um, put some dividers in for me, which helps immensely. All the drawers stay closed with these leather snaps that, that we made. In the kicks, which is only about two inches, two, three inches deep, we have some storage under here as well. So we have kicks on both sides and also under here. And we have a farmer style sink, ceramic sink, ceramic and charcoal water filter that blocks out most bacteria. Our water leads to a gray tank under the bus. And then we have some heating pads that adhere to the bottom side of the tanks that would prevent freezing. This is the original emergency exit. And I can hand things to Steve <laughs> while he's barbecuing outside. So it's like a takeout window. <laughs> Our fridge is a uh, apartment sized fridge. It was originally red. I sanded it down to the metal and uh, painted it a nice flat black. And the fridge runs off the inverter. Here, we're utilizing every single amount of storage. We have, we had some extra space here. So we have a little serving tray that we use quite a bit. Um, here is my pantry, which I love so much for my array of spices and honeys and olive oils. And I have another pullout here for my utensils, some wine and various other groceries. We had to find a place for the ladder. So when we were designing the cabin tree, Steve left for about three inches. And we put a leather strap there for the easily pull out. So here's our one and only closet. Uh, we divided it into sort of two thirds. Uh, here I keep my brooms and such here. And then the other half is a hanging clothes. This sits over the wheel well, but it's all the space we, we need for just the two of us. We decided to separate the shower from the bathroom. Um, originally, we had the two together. We had played with this layout numerous times, switching them back and forth, but we just like the idea that if someone is showering, if one of us is showering, the other one can use the toilet or the sink or the, the mirror. So in our little toilet room here, we have a pedestal sink, which is a bowl that we purchased in Mexico. And we drilled a hole with a diamond drill. Here is just some slide out cabinets for our toothbrushes and toiletries, everyday toiletries. So this is our DIY composting toilet with a urine separator that we purchased from Kierwick. Under here is, again, utilizing every square inch. We uh, had some extra storage, so this is where we keep our toilet paper. So this is our, our shower stall, which we include completely in tile. We applied some frosting to the window. This was over the wheel well. My husband being 6'6", we decided to do a sit-down shower bench. So this is um, Ipe wood, which is great for moisture. And our drain is here. This is one of my favorite places in the whole school. Underneath the bed is um, our chest of drawers for like our underwear, socks, t-shirts, all with dividers. It's 32 inches deep, so it's about half the width of the bed. With the windows in the bedroom, we basically divide it in half because we were worried about moisture, getting all the bedding wet. So we do that on both sides to utilize storage. We have some storage in our headboard here. 
some USB outlets on either side of the bed. It is a queen size bed. And with my husband, Steve being 6'6", he fits just perfectly here. This is our TV, which is on an arm. Honestly, we don't use the TV a lot. So that is our sole TV in the schoolie. You know, don't overwhelm yourself. If you're starting to feel overwhelmed, walk away and make it a smaller project, you know? Because sometimes you do, like, it, it, it is a big project, so sometimes you do get, like, oh, is this ever gonna end, you know? Especially when it comes to ripping down. When you're ripping down, that's the most brutal part of the job, the tear down. I remember taking the ceiling down and there were 750 rivets. Yeah. That I had to cut off with a cold steel chisel and a hammer. Those kind of projects are miserable and they're hard and they take time. And you just gotta just say, okay, today I'm gonna do to here. Okay, I'm done. Okay, tomorrow I'm gonna do to here. You've got it torn down and clean and you got it prep to build, then it becomes fun because you're, then you're seeing new stuff come in and it's starting to look like something, starting to feel like something. You keep starting new and you finish. You start new and you finish. Yeah, break it up. And then, then you don't get overwhelmed by it. 